Good morning, Sarah. Welcome. You may shut your camera off. Yeah, we'll do 30 more seconds just to see if anybody else joins us. All right, everybody, thank you very much. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sarah Olafson, and I, here comes Tara. See, as soon as you start talking, then one more joins us. Hello, Tara, welcome. You may shut your camera off. Thank you very much. Can you find it? Hey, thank you. Again, everybody, my name is Sarah Olafson from United Way, and you are in the right presentation right now. This is Mask Wearing Tips 101. Uh, thank you for joining us. Please, all of your microphones should be on mute, and if you need to ask any questions at this time, please use the chat feature, and we will monitor that during this presentation. Uh, if you do want to ask a question on camera, feel free to turn your camera on. This will be recorded today to share, and it will be on, available on our website, if appropriate, at the end. So we are asking that your cameras are on, uh, shut off. It just makes for better recording at the end. And if anyone's on from the media, we do ask that you leave because this is not for media consumption. With that, I'd like to introduce our two presenters today. Jan and Anna are both here from Aspirus. Thank you very much for joining us. Jan is a registered nurse with four-year degree from the UW Eau Claire in nursing. She has worked for Aspirus for seven years and is currently, she serves as an occupational health manager for Aspirus Clinics, in which she is part of the business health team. Jan, can you wave so we know which one is you? Thank you. <laughs> Anna is a certified infection preventionist with a degree from UW La Crosse in microbiology and in medical technology. She currently serves as an infection, infection preventionist, preventionist from Aspirus Massa Hospital and Clinics. She also leads the Spirus System in Infection Prevention. Infection, infection Preventionists, oh my goodness. <laughs> They're all part of the safety uh, experts trained for Aspirus. And both of these women are experts in mask wearing. Again, because of their profession, mask wearing is something that they do every day. It is not customary for us to wear masks every day. So they're going to go through some tips and tricks on how to wear these bad boys. 24 7. I turn the presentation over to both of you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thanks for having us. We're happy to talk to you guys today about wearing masks. I guess it's something that we in the healthcare profession kind of take for granted and we don't realize that, you know, wearing masks is something that's not uh, accustomed for those of, in the general population. So I have a list of questions that Sarah submitted on wearing face masks and, uh, you know, there are are many great options and actually opinions out there. Uh, so let's talk about, you know, the kinds of masks. Uh, Anna and I both will be presenting uh, a little bit. So there's lots of different types of masks. There's surgical masks, there's cloth masks, there's respirators, um, N95s, you'll hear about those a lot in the news. There's also respirators that help people who are more in an industrial environment. Um, so with a cloth mask, which is what you guys would be typically wearing uh, in your environment, the CDC uh, recommends this as well as uh, your employer. And we also have a state mandate now that requires a mask uh, in public. So there's many different styles, shapes, colors. Um, you can make your own, you can purchase them on a website. Uh, sometimes you can find them at a craft show. You can pick them up just about anywhere uh, to what your liking is. Uh, the, the key to knowing about a mask, um, what the CDC recommends is that it's a tightly woven fabric uh, and two layers. Uh, also that when you're wearing it, um, again, Anna will demonstrate this, that it has a tight uh, seal around your nose and around your cheeks. Um, so 
if you ask what kind of fabric is that, that fabric really is quilting fabric. It's a tight woven cotton fabric. It breathes, but it also allows um, good protection uh, to keep droplets uh, either from your nose or from your mouth uh, in versus coming out. Um, some people wear bandanas, some people wear handkerchiefs, some people are wearing gaiters, um, those different kinds of things. Really, they're not recommended. Um, bandanas and handkerchiefs are not recommended due to the amount of leakage that can come out the sides or on the bottom of uh, those types of um, coverage. Uh, a gaiter does have a tight fit against your face. As long as it is a tightly woven fabric, uh, that should give you fairly good protection. Um, if it's if a handkerchief or a bandana is all you have at the time, you know, it's better to have some protection than none. It's just not the most recommended version. Um, so I do understand that there was a question about a candle test and whether or not uh, that is a valid um, test in order to be able to check whether a mask is a good quality. So in checking into a candle test, because neither Anna or I have ever heard of that, uh, in looking at that, we realized that there are a few things wrong with a candle test or the lighter test, uh, those kind of things. Every mask is different, as we just talked about. You know, ideally, you're not going to have a thin fabric or you're not going to have a super thick fabric, those different kinds of things. And everybody's lung capacity or volume and the ability to exhale is different. So that's really not a true test of whether or not a mask can provide protection for you. So Anna, do you want to uh, take off how to um, put on the different kinds of masks, how to take off and put on properly? Yep. And I'll just back up a minute um, when you were talking about the candle test and how that was something that we had never heard of. Um, just keep in mind too, uh, whenever you're doing research on your own, use reputable websites such as the Centers for Disease Control or the Health Department. Um, because we all know there is just so much out there. Um, so make sure that you're using reputable uh, resources when you're when you're looking into things um, on your own. So I have a couple different samples of, of different masks here. So the first type that I'll talk about is a handmade mask that Jan was talking about. Um, you see them in a variety of different types. They have um, some have elastic around the um, that go around the ears or the back of the head. Some will tie. Um, this particular one has pleats on it um, so that it offers good covering, um, as Jan was saying, below the chin and then also fully covers the nose. Um, then there's like a medical type mask. So these are the type that you'll see healthcare workers wearing. Too. So these are um, more of a disposable type material, not cloth. And then the respirators, I don't know if you can kind of see this. This is, they call this a like a duckbill respirator, but it has a certain type of fit. Um, and these respirators are made of an even different type of material that literally will filter the air that you're breathing in. So this is one type of a respirator. Um, these typically will have two straps. I could separate this, maybe. Of course, when you're on camera, nothing goes. There we go, here we go. So they'll have two different straps. So one will go behind the base of the head and one will go um, on the top of the head. And that's to help secure a really good tight fit when you're wearing a, a respirator. This is another type of respirator. Um, and it also has the two different straps. So we're making sure you get a real uh, firm, secure fit on your face. Um, there is information on CDC on the instructions on how to, to wear a mask. And I'll just demonstrate for um, us today, I'll use this medical grade mask. So the first thing that we wanna do is, is get a clean mask and then we're gonna clean our hands. We wanna make sure we have clean, clean hands before we put our mask on. We wanna make sure that that alcohol-based hand disinfectant has a chance to dry. It usually takes about 20 seconds or so, or you could wash your hands with soap and water, but the alcohol-based hand disinfectants are very convenient easily accessible, especially at a desk in the office setting. Okay, so when we put this mask on, I'm going to loop this style behind my ears, and then I'm going to kind of pull it down. So I don't know if you can see, it covers below my chin and above my nose. I would never wanna wear my mask like this because my nose is not covered. You wanna make sure that you're covering your nose and your mouth. And then 
to kind of pinch it here, this mask has a, a little metal piece in it, and then that offers um, a really great fit. And if I breathe in, I don't know if you can see, it kind of, um, you can tell I have a really good seal there on my mask. So then I would um, keep my mask on. It does fit snugly on the sides of my face. I can breathe okay in it. Um, and then when I go to remove my mask, I wanna make sure that my hands are clean as well. So clean my hands. Um, you don't want to touch your face covering or your mask while you have it on. You wanna keep your hands away from your face. And then when I remove this mask, instead of, like I said, don't you don't wanna touch it. Um, so you don't wanna touch the front of the mask or pull it off this way. You wanna carefully touch behind the ear, remove it this way. And then if you're going to save it for later, it's recommended that you fold it inside each other. So this is the outside of the mask. So you fold it in and then for storage, Ideally, you would like to store your mask in a paper bag um, just because it breathes a little bit better than a, uh, like a Rubbermaid container. So CDC will recommend to um, store that in a paper bag if you have one available. Otherwise, in any sort of clean, um, clean space would be acceptable as well. And then, clean my hands. <laughs> Never enough hand hygiene. Keeping our hands clean is really important. Um, so that's kind of my demonstration on the proper use of masks. Was there anything else that I needed to touch on, Jan? I don't think so. I think we're going to get it for those demonstrations. Okay, I got it. Good. So some of the other questions that were submitted um, were talking about painful ear loops and any types of tricks uh, that you guys could use for cloth masks or the masks with the elastic in them. Um, and really, I have a link that um, I've looked on the internet and there are some very creative things. You guys might have heard the monkeys in a barrel and you attach that back here or there's uh, headbands that have buttons or you guys can use certain kind of headbands with buttons on them. Um, any type of those devices would be uh, good uh, as long as they're making sure that you still have your nose covered to the bottom of your chin and that will relieve the pressure off your ears and not too tight around your head because some of those headbands or some of those devices were tight around your head and can cause a headache. And that's really contra indicating you wearing it because why would I want to get a headache when I'm trying to you know, stay safe? So um, what I'll do is I will make sure that I get the link. It's a YouTube video called 11, 11 Surgical Mask Hacks to Save Your Ears. It's a nurse giving a presentation about all the different kinds of hacks that you can use. Um, you know, there's folded fabric with safety pins, there's buckles, there's Velcro, there's suction cups, oh, action figure. She even has an action figure uh, that she turned into uh, some kind of device on the back of your head. So she was really demonstrating for somebody who works with children, you know, kind of fun mask on my face, but, a, you know, a superhero on the back of my head. So it was really kind of fun. Um, but note that any type of these devices can stretch the loops uh, on your masks and could affect uh, if you didn't have that device and you were just gonna wear it for a short period of time and it may make it so that it was too loose fitting and not tight enough to just put around your ears for a short period. So I just wanted to make sure that that was, that you guys are aware of that. Okay, so I'll get that link out to um, Sarah to put in with this presentation regarding the YouTube video uh, that shows how to make the devices, how to use the devices off and on, you know, and it's really good technique she shows just like Anna did using the loops and not touching the actual mask itself. Um, the next question that was submitted to us had to do with glasses that fog up. Um, Gosh, this, this one was a really hard one, you guys. And, uh, you know, we all deal with that as well. And there's a lot of uh, tips and tricks out there, but not a lot of them work, to be quite honest, or at least that we have researched. Um, so the, the one is, you know, we want to make sure that we have a good tight seal and that tight seal helps that air get up and uh, from getting up into your glasses, right? So if I put my glasses on, and then I put my mask on and I blow, I'm gonna fog up my glasses. That's that warm moisture from our mouth or our nose condensating on the lenses. 
So if you can tuck it underneath your glasses, that sometimes help and that pressure of your glasses makes a tighter seal. Um, and then it's not uh, as readily to fog. Those, that's one tip or trick. So another tip or trick is to uh, use a type of um, hand soap. Uh, they use, they said any type of hand soap would work and you apply it generously to the lenses in all areas on your lenses and then you rinse that soap off. And the thought is that that, that soap causes a film to cling to your lenses. And then when you have your mask on, the condensation doesn't stick to your lenses. That's probably the one, you know, if you guys are really gonna do it, that's probably the one most homemade uh, that would work effectively for you. Um, another one is I know that there are anti-fogging agents out there uh, that people can use for their shields or their masks or their goggles, uh, those kind of things. I just happen to know that you can get them from Granger or I, you know, there might be some type of product anti-fog that maybe from one of the eye clinics we could get, uh, those different kinds of things. And we'd probably have to call around for that. Um, they say really what we're trying to do in order to get anti-fog is to create an additional barrier right here at the bridge of our nose and our cheeks where those air leaks up behind our glasses. They've recommended toilet paper, tissue paper, all those different kinds of things. But with glasses, it really kind of causes a bulky feeling. And, you know, if you have trifocals or bifocals, it, it throws everything off and it, you, just, you just can't use it as well. So I guess I would try the soap trick or the anti-fogging product that's out there uh, that you can purchase, okay? Um, let's see, I personally use my mask and I raise it up a little higher uh, to go and again, underneath my glasses to have my glasses set on my cheeks to cause that barrier. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that. Uh, and if you guys come up with any, please share because you know we all who wear glasses are struggling with the fog. You are not alone. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please let us know on that one. Uh, it, but it really is any type of product that works for you. So there's also questions on how to clean your mask. Uh, what's the best way if I have a cloth mask? What should I do for cleaning? Uh, you can include your face mask uh, in your general laundry. Uh, that's not a problem, but you want to use laundry detergent detergent and the warmest appropriate water setting uh, for the cloth face covering that you have. You can wash it by hand uh, and there is a recipe for a bleach solution that you can use if that's not going to ruin uh, your fabric that you have. It is five tablespoons or one third cup household bleach to room temperature water. Uh, that's that's a, that's a gallon. So you'd probably be able to clean quite a few masks with a gallon of uh, that concoction. Uh, the only thing that they did say on the CDC is you need to make sure that your bleach is intended for disinfection uh, because some bleach products uh, are used for uh, safe clothing but not suitable for disinfecting. So, uh, you know, so I'm guessing that there's different levels or grades. Is that correct, Anna? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. just read the labels. Also that every bleach has an expiration product, uh, date on it. So you wanna make sure that your product is still uh, good and not expired. And I believe and, the general, oh, sorry. I'll just chime in here if you don't mind. I right believe the, the general rule, um, oh, this goes back to my laboratory days, um, but the general rule when you do make a bleach solution, when you dilute it like that, is that it's, it's definitely good for 24 hours. Um, but as time goes on, um, it may not be as effective. So there, there could be instructions on the product label specifically for that as well. That's that's wonderful. That and another, you know, like a little service announcement, never mix bleach with ammonia. Uh, that goes back to chemistry class and that's not a good thing. So um, you want to rinse thoroughly uh, once the uh, your face mask has been soaking in that bleach solution for at least five minutes. You want to rinse coolly, uh, thoroughly with cool or warm water. Okay. Uh, to dry it, you can put it in the dryer at the highest heat setting uh, and leave it until it's completely dry or you can air dry it, lay it flat, allow it to completely dry and um, 
and place it in direct sunlight if possible. That sun is an amazing uh, disinfectant uh, and it just kills all different kinds of germs. So uh, that is another way to clean your mask. Jan, can I just... Oh, I'm going to interrupt for just a second. This is Sarah again from United Way. We just had another guest join us. Welcome, Ron. Ron, if you're able to turn off your camera, we would appreciate that just because we are recording and Anna and Jan will be on the main screen then. Thank you so much for joining us. Anna, go ahead. Yep, and I was just going to add, I, I kind of learned this the hard way um, when I was doing laundry and washing our masks. I put them in the dryer and out of habit, I used a dryer sheet. So I always use a dryer sheet. Well, when I went to put that mask on, it was just, it was too fragrant for me. So um, what I do is I wash my cloth masks and then I just hang, hang them dry. Um, so me personally, I didn't like the feeling of having a dryer sheet. <laughs> on my face. Well, it depends on what kind of environment yeah, you work in. Yeah, April fresh. <laughs> there you go. So um, the other the other thing is, you know, we just want to talk about why should we wear a mask? You know, the CDC is recommending it. Uh, public health recommend uh, recommends it. Uh, it's now a state order here in Wisconsin, and it really is all about protecting not only ourselves but the other around us. Uh, besides social distancing and disinfecting, you know, and hand sanitizing, masks really allow for any droplets that are present. Uh, from talking or coughing or sneezing to be, uh, it prevents it from being expelled any kind of great distances outward, okay? So why, why is it important to wear a mask? It's important so when we do cough, sneeze, talk, any of those kinds of things, you know, people might say, well, I, I, don't, I don't care if I get sick. Think about that invisible family or invisible group of friends that you socialize behind you. Are any of them immunocompromised? Are any of them have comorbidities, you know, that would cause them to be um, hurt or harmed by receiving COVID and you accidentally gave that to them? So think about that. You know, I think we also need to think of, you know, our grandparents, our in-laws, our spouses, all of those different types of people who really could be affected. And by us wearing a mask, we could save their life. Um, so the only other thing that I have to say is kind of like a little public service announcement. It's really hard to see when people are smiling when you have a, a mask on, right? You can't tell that my teeth are showing, that I'm smiling, my, my frown is up and not upside down, those different kinds of things. So really, I think um, uh, to note that your inflection in your voice is super important and your eyes speak volumes. If you can, you know, talk with your eyes and smile with your eyes, that's really important when having half of our face is covered up because we're, you know, doing the right thing and wearing a mask. So um, those are really what I have. Anna, do you have anything else to add? Just kind of on that same note, um, it's funny, we did a training session here where we recorded a nurse putting on all the personal protective equipment. And you could tell she was smiling during that whole video, even though her face was covered. But like you said, um, our expressions in our eyes and um, the inflection in our voice really can, um, you know, show, show your emotions. So that's good, good to point out. Thank you. So Sarah, that, that's all we have, unless there's some questions that we could uh, answer. That's wonderful, Anna and Jan, thank you so much. I invite anybody to turn your camera on if you have any questions specifically for either one of them, feel free. We have been monitoring the chat and it has been pretty quiet. Can you guys talk about anxiety wearing the mask? And sometimes it can feel a little bit claustrophobic. And are there any tips to just take the mask break and walk outside and breathe for a couple of seconds? That would absolutely that would be what it would be is, you know, I think you need to realize it kind of becomes one with you. And once you realize that it's there and you can breathe through it, I think that would decrease the amount of anxiety. So I think it's really coming to the moment. Why am I panicking? Can I take some deep breaths? Do I need to leave my workspace and go outside uh, so I'm socially distanced and uh and can take that mask off and have a little bit of a breather. Recollect yourself, um, definitely take some uh, deep breaths, slow deep breaths, we don't wanna hyperventilate, uh, and just kind of calm yourself back down and say, you got this, and then put that mask back on and you know you can go back into your work environment. Uh, any advice for kids wearing masks 
and encouraging them to do it correctly. And if parents or grandparents are setting good examples for children as we head back to school. Correct. Um, actually, I have learned uh, that if there is a child who has a want, uh, you can bribe them. <laughs> so if you have a child that likes to play video games, you can say if you wear your mask for 30 minutes, you can play your video game for 15. Uh, you know, those different kinds of things. I think and teaching them the proper etiquette of not touching their face, how to take it off properly, just being a good role model uh, to that child uh, is huge. Thank you, both of you. Again, I will open this up to questions. Anybody from our staff or from our volunteers that are on today, if anybody else has any additional questions about mask wearing. Uh, again, the mandate is through the end of September, unless that is overturned or different. Um, also in the healthcare setting, correct, at Aspirus or at Marshfield, masking is permanent. It's just the way it is right now, and it's for the health of you our clinicians, our providers, and for the health of the patients and families. Uh, you are open for business. If you are sick, if you're feeling ill, please go in and don't wait. Tiffany is on camera. Maybe she has a question and then we have a question in the chat as well. I do have Tiffany. one question. If you're wearing a mask and you're trying to make a phone call, do you have any suggestions um, while you're wearing your mask safely to be able to make that phone call? Sometimes I've struggled with people being able to hear me clearly. Yeah, I all I know is that I, I usually have to speak up a little bit and I almost make uh, an effort to pronunciate every word because unfortunately your mask muffles slightly. Um, we're fortunate enough that I can take my mask off at work because I have my own phone. But if you don't have your own phone, you know, you have to keep your mask on so that you're protecting uh, others who have to use that phone as well. Anna, do you have any uh, uh, thoughts on that? No, I was going to say the exact same thing. I find myself if I have a mask on and I'm on the telephone that I just, you know, speak up a little bit louder mm -hmm. than I'm here. Ron just turned his camera on. He has a question and he's raising his hand. You want to unmute yourself, Ron? Okay. Well, new new technology. Uh, the, the question I have regards uh, use of the mask to cover both your nasal passages and your mouth. How effective is it? You see lots of people just sort of ha having their mask, you know, just maybe touching their nose or below the nose like you have. And I'll let you take this one. Sure. And that's a great demonstration, Sarah, of, of how not to wear the mask. So when we're wearing our masks, we definitely want to make sure that our nose is fully covered and we're not doing like what Sarah <laughs> what Sarah's <laughs> doing. Um, the respiratory droplets um, are expelled both from our nose and our mouth, so it's important to to cover both. So is there is there an opinion on how, if it's you know do more come from the mouth or more come from the nose? Any anything on that or? Um, the general recommendation is that both of them are covered. I would suspect um, that droplets may come out of your mo mouth more often because you're talking and that it's not you're you're not constantly sneezing or exhaling, you know, through your nose too often. Um, but the recommendation is that both the nose and the mouth are covered. Thanks. Ladies, there's one more question in the chat. How long are cloth masks considered okay or how many washes? I know we're all in a new environment here as far as cloth masks, but is there a recommendation for the timeline? Do we have to change these every couple of months, weeks? Should we be washing them every day? I would only use a cloth mask once a day. Um, and then either sun it or wash it uh, to get that out of there because you want to make sure that your mask is dry. Uh, otherwise, the e efficacy of that is not as valid. Um, I would say that you would monitor the integrity of your cloth uh, to make sure that um, it's not frayed, has holes in it, uh, that it's still uh, smaller on the sides and bigger on the top and that these um, didn't come out so that you still have that good seal. Um, Anna, can you think of anything else? No, that's a, those are, that's exactly what I was going to say too. But um, masks should be washed on a daily, definitely on a daily basis. So um, 
once you once you wear it, um, it should be either hand washed or washed in the washing machine, like you had said. And then um, as part of that process, uh, make sure that you inspect your mask mask to make sure that it's all intact. And if the fabric would, um, you know, after multiple washings, maybe that fabric will become a little bit compromised. So then you would want to um, discard that and, and get a different mask. I have a whole arsenal of cloth masks because my husband and I both work in healthcare too. And, you know, just that constant um, use, you want to have a good supply, especially if we have to wear it, um, you know, every day, which is what we have to do now. That, and I've noticed that I always have a spare because if I, if I sneeze or cough or oh. something happens that, you know, I would want to be like, Ooh, I normally would do that in a Kleenex or I normally would wash my yeah. hands after that. You know, those kind of things. I change out my mask during yep. the day uh, so that I definitely have a dry, non de de contaminated, contaminated. Mask. That's the word I'm looking for. I don't want my mask to be contaminated by my own self so that I'm healthy okay. and uh, that I have clean uh, by my mouth and nose. Yep. Good point. Good point. Hi, this is Tiffany again. I was, you know, you bring up a really good point about coughing and sneezing. So if if you are going to cough or sneeze while you're wearing a mask, um, do you need to still be utilizing a Kleenex, your elbow? Do you need to change your mask after that? What what are your recommendations specifically around that? Yeah, if the if the mask becomes wet or contaminated, you're going to want to re to remove it and replace it, as Jan was saying. Yep. Um, and it's always, I think so much of us are in the habit now when we do cough or sneeze that we kind of automatically sneeze into our elbows and the mask is just that extra barrier then, yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. I'm just double checking the chat one more time and I believe all of the questions have been answered in the chat. I will give everybody about 30 more seconds if you want to come on camera and ask a question or send us a chat and we will make sure that we're monitoring that. We really appreciate this today. Again, I know in healthcare, it's part of what you do every day. And for the rest of the world, this is a new experience for us. So we are all trying to navigate this as safely, respectfully as possible. United Way has been a part of giving masks out to the community. And it looks like we will do that again this week. Um, knowing that it's a personal decision, but that we are under mandate right now. And United Way certainly supports the health of the community. Anna and Jan, thank you very much for today. I really appreciate your expertise. And if there are no other questions, we will end this meeting today. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Afternoon. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy the sunshine. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Stay well. Great job. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Have a good day, you guys. Bye-bye.